Hi and welcome back. So this is the last video that I plan to shoot for my comic book cabinet because guess what? They are done. We're almost done. I still have a few more um, handles and plexiglass to put on, but I'm taking a break because it actually takes a while to put these things on and I just, I needed a break from that. So um, anyway, just a couple of things. So for the most part, you saw a completed comic book cabinet the other day, um, showed you something like this. Um, I did mention that there was a little bit of bowing happening with the wood. Um, it was the plywood, just it was the way it was made. Um, what was happening is it was coming slightly like inward in one of them and sli popping slightly out on the other. Um, and especially like in the middle part. So I was having trouble getting the drawers to go in and the sliders to go in. So I had to work, make a work around. Um, I... Uh, got another piece of two feet by four feet birch plywood. It was a half inch piece because I didn't need that much. Um, and what I did was I, you know, stained it, varnished it. Um, that just took a couple of days, pretty easy. And then I made pocket holes all along the side. You can't see it, but it's all the way to the back. Um, and I made pocket holes. This measures uh, 10 inches by 23 inches exactly. So I made it 10 inches to fit here to here. And I made 23 because I figured that's basically a little bit longer than the drawer itself. It'll go almost all the way to the end. And, you know, if there's a little gap, it's fine. Um, basically, what I did with this is I set it up in front, made sure it was at least flush here so it looked nice. And um, I put them in. Balancing it was a little difficult when the two sides were slightly larger than 10 inches. That was interesting. I kind of used the drawers below and then a couple extra spare pieces of three quarter inch to kind of help balance it. Um, if you recall, I made these lines um, at every foot on the four feet plywood um, to place this so then I could figure out like where four inches was from the bottom. I used that as a guiding rule because that foot mark kind of it says where the drawer is going to start, you know? And so what I did was then I placed this board just directly underneath it. Um, I had to make sure I allowed for that, you know, for a half inch clearance here, but it worked out pretty well. So um, that was fine. And um, yeah, so I basically placed this in, a lot of jewelry making, a lot of fun, not really, and put in uh, pocket holes to hold them to the sides. and. That kind of helped with the overall bowing of the um, of the side. As you can see, I put about two in the middle um, of this of this piece, and it kind of blends in because I I um, put them in the way I did, so I it doesn't look bad. It doesn't like stick out too much. I think in the future, if I was to make another one, I would just get more of these pieces and just put them in and build them in as I do it because I kind of like the look of like a finished you know um, drawer with this bottom piece right here it kind of looks kind of looks nice so maybe I'll do that in the future but um, for my purposes for this it seems to work out well um, it hold, held the pieces together kept um, many like it, it saved me time because a few of the drawers then would go in easily and come out easily there were still some gaps, so if you find that your um, slide, your like your drawers are going in and then they're kind of loose on the sliders or they're not quite fitting, um, I just got a couple of washers per hole that I screwed in. So because I put three screws here, three screws on this one, what I did was um, I basically would put in washers and I would put in no more than two on each side. So um, there was one or two of the situations where I needed to put like two on this side and a couple, one or two on this side to make it fit, right? But basically I had to, I had to assemble this and then take out the screws a um, couple at a time and put on the washers. Now here was my trick for them. Um, I took a little bit of wood glue, put the wood glue on the bottom of the washer and then used the screw to help fasten that washer to the hole that I had made for the slider. Of course, the slider was kind of like I pushed it a little bit to the side. I left it basically, I, I would keep one screw in, screw out the two, the middle and the back, pull the slider down and reveal the hole. And then I would go ahead and add the glue 
stick the washer on, use the screw to firm the washer there, and then let it dry a little bit so it holds the washer in place. And then I would go ahead and pull the, out the screw. Um, I would screw the last one in properly, and then I would undo the first screw and then like glue the washer and let it hold there, and then I would go ahead and put in the last two. That helps it so you don't have to like stress about where the slider lines up because then it's a little bit, it's still set in place, you know, it's still holding in place. So you don't have to stress about losing your slider placing. Um, and it also like, it helps create that extra space on this. Well, I didn't do it on that one, but it creates that little space on this side. It's a little gap, but it helps hold the, um, push the drawer side out a little bit and allows the drawers to fit in perfectly. So, you know, I just got some washers. They were pretty simple. I think it was like, um, let's see. I got these kind, the uh, Everbuilt flat washers, about 100 count. Um, they are, I don't remember what size I got, but um, they're pretty small. So, I don't remember what kind, but there you go. Oh, there's, a washer. there's a washer. So that's what I had for that. Um, then after, that took most of the day, just getting, you know, all of the, these, you know, spacing pieces in, uh, getting all the washers in because I kind of had to just eyeball it, you know, put on a couple washers, see if the drawer would go in. No, I need more. You know, I mean, it was annoying. But once I did that and all the drawers went in, then life was good. Um, as you can see, I've started putting on the plexiglass and the handles. Now, um, I haven't had any issues too much with the plexiglass. Uh, I just go in, take my drill, go in pretty slow. Um, the screws that I had, I bought were like eight inch. So I, or sorry, number eight. So I went ahead and I used the number eight um, drill bit. Uh, I kind of have a set countersink going though. I don't really need it. The, these don't really countersink. Um, so as you can see, they pop out a little bit. Um, the, I mean, I, it's pretty standard. I just put in six, uh, one towards the top, one towards the bottom, and then one in the middle. Um, I just want this to be on firmly. So, you know, it, it's not, you know, moving or anything like that. Um, and then the copper handles. Uh, so I got these copper front facing handles from Home Depot. Um, I had to order them specially because I needed 24, but you can probably find them. Uh, the, well, the copper ones you can't find. You can find the black. Those are pretty easy. So copper, you'd have to order from the website. They come with the screws, so they're pretty simple and easy to place on. Um, I just used an old piece of wood, uh, one of the spares that I had, lined it up, figured out where I wanted my handles so I could center them, um, created a couple holes in that, and I'm kind of using it as a template. It just kind of helps line them up so I don't have to... Uh, measure every single time um, and that was basically it they're pretty easy to put on I basically put on the plexiglass and then I add the handles after I've done the six other screws put on that handle and then it all works out well the handle is great at the bottom of this drawer it helps you know it pulls out pretty easy um, it's pretty secure just make sure that if you're, uh, I do do a little pilot hole for all of these. Um, the pilot hole for the longer screws are obviously, you know, much deeper. The pilot hole for the, um, for the handles is pretty small. Make sure that you don't over pilot for that one because if you strip the screw, you end up with this one, <laughs> like my first one, which is actually not screwed in because I messed up, but I didn't want to create more holes and try to hide things and then it would be off center and I didn't like that. But luckily, um, have at least one that's perfect, we'll open it just fine. So, uh, that was my bad. <laughs> but um, other than that, uh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of these lovely um, plexiglass and handle pieces. And then this is going to be done. So, um, I'm basically going to end this here because... I did test it out before, and I know how many comics I can fit. It's about 240 comics per drawer, um, and that, you know, gives me room to pull stuff out, too. So it's it's a pretty nice fit. Um, I might put in less because I'm obviously going to be continuously adding to my collection, so I might leave a little room in between, maybe just put 200, so I can always add more comics. Um, but we'll see. 
but yeah, this is the uh, this is the lovely comic book cabinet. I love how it turned out. Um, the drawers are going pretty well. Uh, setup is nice, and I'm really liking how they're looking. So um, I think it was overall a great success. I'm pretty happy with it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the you know the question in the comments below, or um, you know somehow contact me I guess some other way. I don't know how they do it on YouTube, but um, I'm happy to answer any questions or help you out if you want to design your own, you know, give you some hints. I had a pretty fun time with this and I really hope that the construction bug doesn't hit so I don't make any more of these uh, anytime soon because man that was exhausting. All right, well thank you guys. Um, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoy. Good luck with your own cabinets. Bye.